there is more to electric fields than just point charges in Coulomb's law. Let's look at an important one, which is the uniform electric field between charged plates. So let's take this one idea at a time. First of all, let me draw you a uniform electric field. All that means is that it's an electric field that is constant. Uh, if I make these vectors all the same size, there you go, constant. So here, the electric field is a certain magnitude, say two newtons per coulomb, and it points to the right. And everywhere you go, it's two newtons per coulomb, pointing to the right. Here, two newtons per coulomb, pointing to the right. Two newtons per coulomb, pointing to the right. That is a uniform electric field because it's constant. It doesn't change. That's what makes it uniform. Now, in some physics problems, you might just be told, you have a uniform field. Do the problem. Answer the question. How fast does the particle move? What's the force? Etc. But you might also have cases where the problem is about how we made the uniform field. Because you might wonder how we make this. You think you have a point charge. The field's all spherically symmetric, shooting out all directions. How would you make this? So the way you make it is the second part, the charged plates. So if you have a charged plate, and plate just means a large surface. It could be a square, it could be a circle, it doesn't really matter. Like this and like this. You'll create a uniform field. In this case, we could figure out even which one is positive and which one is negative, right? So the field, let's see, if I'm a test charge and I'm flying this way and I'm positive, I must be running away from the positive plate. So this must be the positive plate. So what that means is this is simply a surface, a large flat surface with positive charge on it. And this must be the negative plate. Because if I'm a test charge and I'm feeling an electric field pushing me this way, it's because I'm being attracted to this plate. So this is just a surface with negative charge on it. Okay. Two plates will make a uniform field. Now, it'll be uniform if the plates are big compared to the spacing, which is not what I've drawn here. Right here you can see the size of the plate and the spacing is about the same. The field here would actually kind of curve at the edges and it might be kind of uniform in the middle. So often we, we mean in the problem ideal uniform plates, meaning infinitely large and with a small spacing. But often when we draw it, we don't draw it that way because in the drawing it would look like this. And it would be hard to know what's going on. Okay? So just imagine this goes on forever. And then you might agree that it is a uniform field. Um, let's see, so we have a uniform field. It points in a uniform direction. And then what you want to think about is what force does a charge feel inside, okay? So inside the uniform field, a charge feels what force, and the answer is F equals QE. F is Q, whatever a charge Q feels, charge, the charge I'm referring to is Q, E. And of course we know they're vectors. So if the E field is pointing to the right, in this case the force would also point to the right. So this is what we use when we talked about the idea of a field, and this is what we used when we talked about a point charge, but this is true for any field. Okay, you might just be given a uniform field. You might be given one going at 45 degrees. Whatever field you have, if you want the force on a little charge sitting there, it's F equals QE. Right? So if this is that charge, force that way. I can show you this uh, with some of my own little plates. So over here, we've got two uh, metal plates. And I have them hooked up to this crazy thing called a Wimshurst machine, so, or a Wimshurst machine. So when I turn the knob on this machine, it rubs some plates, and it rubs some metal discs, and it rubs, and it sends charge, and it rubs, and it sends charge, and it builds up a really big charge. And it's sending it. I have it hooked up to these two plates. So uh, one plate is positive and one is negative. This plate is positive and this is negative. So these two plates are the ones I drew on the board. Now, therefore, the field between them is uniform.
It's not great, right? Because again, I have the spacing is almost as big as the plate. So it's not a great uniform field, but it's fairly uniform in between those two plates. So to show you there's a force, what I'm going to do is get some little Teflon balls that I made out of tape, Teflon tape. I'm going to rub them on the rabbit fur to get them nice and charged up. And we're going to drop them between the plates. And when you see, when you zoom in, you'll see as they drop, they're going to feel a force and be attracted towards one of the plates. So first let me charge it up again. All right. And let me charge up the ball. Let's see what happens. And again. Now, to make sure you believe me, let's try something. Let's take the two electrodes and switch them. And when we switch them, the field should go the other way. All right, let's see. Now, before we do that, I want to discharge this thing. I don't really want to get shocked. It's kind of exciting here. There we go. So now, let's see. I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to put this over here. So now it has changed direction. I'm going to get my Teflon pieces here. All right, so now I'm going to charge it up the other way. And we'll see if I do that and I charge up my Teflon other way, because the field is now pointing the other way. Let's try again. Other way. So the field back and forth is pushing the little Teflon balls back and forth. Now, if you're trying to keep up with the positives and negatives in your head, keep in mind the Teflon ball is negative. So it's moving against the field. It's moving the opposite direction of the electric field, because F equals QE. And if Q is negative, the force is the opposite of the field.